T1 MRI sequences when protons are placed in a magnetic field they become capable of receiving and transmitting radio frequency electromagnetic waves. After receiving radio frequency energy the protons retransmit radio frequency energy proportional to the density of protons. A pixel within an MRI image represents the amplitude of the radio frequency signal coming from the hydrogen nuclei, protons, in the water and fat. MRI sequence is an ordered combination of RF and gradient pulses designed to acquire the data to form the image. Different tissues have different relaxation times, these relaxation time differences used to generate image contrast. The amplitude of signal is determined by a sequence of radio frequency pulses and applied magnetic gradients as well as the density of protons and their electromagnetic. MRI signal varies across tissue types because gray matter contains more cell bodies than white matter, which is primarily composed of long-range nerve fibers or myelinated axons, along with supporting glial cells. The MRI sequence parameters are chosen to best suit the clinical application. Standard sequences are T1 and T2 weighted imaging and proton density. In T1 weighting, the pixel brightness dependent on proton density and weighted towards those protons that quickly retransmit radio frequency energy decaying to their baseline unexcited state, short TR and short TE. Spin lattice relaxation time is one of the basic pulse sequences in MRI and demonstrates differences in the T1 relaxation times of tissues. T1 weighted sequences are part of almost all MRI protocols and are the most anatomical of images. The resulting images closely resembles the appearances of tissues macroscopically. Fat quickly realigns its longitudinal magnetization, and it appears bright on a T1 weighted image. Conversely, water has much slower longitudinal magnetization realignment after an RF pulse, therefore has less transverse magnetization after a RF pulse. So, water has low signal and appears or dark in T1 weighted image. CSF, dense bone and air appear dark. Fat, such as lipids in the myelinated white matter, appears bright. T1 provides good contrast between gray matter dark gray, and white matter, lighter gray, tissues, while CSF is void of signal, black. Contrast between the neocortex and white matter is best. Contrast between some subcortical gray matter nuclei and white matter is fine but not as good as between cortex and white matter. The caudate and pitamen nuclei, tend to have more white matter fibers and vascular infrastructure than other gray matter regions, increasing the brightness lighter gray, more similar to white matter. The dominant signal intensities of different tissues are, CSF gives a low signal intensity and is black. Muscle is of intermediate signal intensity or gray. Fat gives a high signal intensity and is white. Gray matter of the brain is intermediate in signal intensity or gray. Whereas white matter is hyper intense compared to gray matter or whitish in color. Pathological processes such as demyelination or inflammation, often increase water content in tissues, which decreases the signal on T1. White matter disease often shows up as darker areas in the lighter gray colored white matter. Dark on T1. Edema, tumor, infection, hyperacute and chronic blood. Low proton density, calcification. Flowing blood. Bright on T1. Fat, subacute hemorrhage, melanin protein rich fluid slowly flowing blood paramagnetic substances like gadolinium t1 weighted sequences provide the best contrast for paramagnetic contrast agents such as gadolinium containing compounds t1 weighted sequences include t1 weighted spin echo t1 weighted gradient echo gadolinium post contrast sequences time of flight 2D or 3D magnetic resonance angiography sequences, contrast enhanced magnetic resonance angiography, dual echo sequence, in phase and out of phase. Contrast enhanced, the most commonly used contrast agents in MRI are gadolinium based.
The contrast is injected intravenously and scans are obtained a few minutes after administration. These agents have the effect of causing T1 signal to be increased. Pathological tissues will demonstrate accumulation of contrast, mostly due to leaky blood vessels, and therefore appear as brighter than surrounding tissue. Often post-contrast T1 sequences are also fat suppressed to make this easier to appreciate. Fat suppression or attenuation or saturated is a tweak performed on many T1 weighted sequences, to suppress the bright signal from fat. Due to short relaxation times, fat has a high signal on magnetic resonance images. This high signal, easily recognized on MRI but small amounts of lipids are more difficult to detect on conventional MRI. Fat suppression is commonly used in magnetic resonance imaging to suppress the signal from adipose tissue or to detect adipose tissue. The high signal from fat can mask subtle contrast difference in non-fatty tissue with fat signal. A contrast enhancing tumor may be hidden by the surrounding fat. These problems have prompted development of fat suppression techniques in MRI. Usually fat suppression done by stir technique, a short T1 relaxation time by means of inversion recovery sequences. Thank you.